General and Lady Freiburg arrive at Swansea to see the NZEF rugby team in action against a Welsh 15. It's a brilliantly fine day and a crowd of 10,000 are here to watch the game. The New Zealanders wear their famous all-black togs. After the Welshmen welcome their visitors with their national song, the Kiwis respond by giving a haka. Some football fans have seen this before, but to schoolboys who've grown up during the war, it's a new experience. The game proves to be an exciting one throughout and is marked by exceptionally hard forward play. The Kiwis found difficulty in following some of the local rulings in scrums and lineouts. The NZEF team goes on to win with a victory of 22 points to 15. In Wellington recently, people who stopped to gaze into a certain window weren't just window shoppers. They saw something that had an interest for everyone. Here were cannon like this, only three inches long, and a travelling crane, an exact model of one used by the railways. There were other models of every kind too, for this was an exhibition of hobbies organized by the Hobby House Club, an organization that has set out to encourage people with a hobby to get together. This working model of a mill engine attracts the attention of two veteran hobbyists. Working parts that are fractions of an inch in size are the result of hours of patience and skilled work. Other examples of model engineering include boats and drills and radio transmitters. This snuff-taking gentleman is just a photograph from an amateur theatre show, for the amateur theatre is represented too, a hobby with a huge following. Sail planing is a new hobby for New Zealand. The towing and release of the gliders is shown by models. Ships in bottles is an old hobby. Of course, some people still prefer a bottle in a ship. Some 140 miles south of Auckland on the west coast, there's a little town called Carthia. It's quiet and half forgotten. Its people fish and farm and take life easily. Here is the spot where the first Maoris arrived some 600 years ago. But today, Carthia is thronged with people, young and old, who've gathered to celebrate the golden jubilee of the founding of their school. They come from all parts of the country. Local Maoris greet them with a haka. Then everyone gets together. School day friendships are renewed. Memories revived. Meanwhile, preparations are made for the feast. And it's strictly in the best Maori tradition. Pork is browned on hot stones. And there are quantities of pippies and kumara and potatoes. They do say that cannibalism once flourished here in the bad old days, but now it's plum pudding that's in demand. It all tastes really good. Now nothing remains but to light the candles on the Jubilee cake, then blow them all out. It's been quite a day in the life of Kafia. Pedestrians are not the only casualties as cars begin to roll again. Animals meet with many accidents, both on and off the roads. And because New Zealanders are those sort of people, we have ambulances and trained helpers to care for injured and sick pets. In 
Worrington, a new animal clinic has been opened by the SPCA. Dogs and cats and other animals and birds are brought here for treatment. For a small fee, they receive expert attention from a qualified vet. This kitten should be called Chadrack. He walked right through a furnace. Thorns and pieces of wire in cat's feet are frequent occurrences. Many private establishments board pets. This little boy wonders, is this the place where they board dogs? Well, Sonny, it certainly looks as though it might be. This is my dog, Smuts. He likes mints, and I bath him on Saturday mornings. So Smuts is boarded whilst the family go on holiday. He sees lots of mints, and this dog gets a bath every night. What more could a dog want than this? Good company, lots of room, and plenty of noise.